Welcome back, CS403. Today we're going to be making a calculator application. And right here is what the finished product is going to be looking like, at least the design of it. Um, so basically, we're going to be using widgets. All these buttons are widgets, including this text field. Uh, we're going to be setting some IDs. Um, we're going to be importing some classes that we need. And we're going to be working with event handling. So let's go ahead, if you have a project open like I do, go to Close Project, and it'll actually bring up this main menu. Go ahead and start a new project, and we'll name it something like My Calc. Click Next, select the API that you're using. Um, if you're not viewing this video within 2015, maybe it's 2016 now, you might have a new API available, maybe like 23 or something. Go ahead and select that. Click Next. Blank activity, next, and we can name this main activity as it is. Click finish. All right, so we'll wait as this builds for us. That wasn't too bad. All right, first things first, go ahead and delete hello world. Go ahead and click on it and then press the delete key and bye bye. All right, let me actually, I'll bring this down so we have a little bit more. A better visual here and let's go ahead and make um let's see three a three by four row of um i want to do small buttons okay so this will be you can just kind of eyeball it button one and there it is button two Keep on losing my place over here, small button. Okay, and you want to have them in this orientation too, because XML actually, it takes these arrows and it notices where you put them in relevance to the other boxes. Um, so later if we try moving them around again, those details will be saved and it's going to cause us a lot more work as far as like rearranging them. So let's keep them like this, even if they're a little off a little bit, doesn't really matter. So let's continue. Okay. What we want is the up arrow and right arrow here is the best. For this one on the left, now you're going to want the one that points up, one that points left and then up. You'll know what I'm talking about if you can't actually see it. You'll be able to see it better on your screen, I'm sure. Okay, let's finish this up. Oh, that's small text. Okay, now we have our 3 by 4 Those will be 1 through 9 and then 0. We'll have our clear button, our equals button. And let's go ahead and make two more for this one will be like add um, subtract and let's do multiply and let's see what could we do for we'll just put it down here for our divide okay so if you click on new button the very first one You'll see this little light bulb that pops up. Go ahead and click that, and it'll say hard-coded string new button should be should use the string resource. Go ahead and click on this. Now, basically, what this is is there's a strings to XML file, and it saves all of our strings um, as resources. So basically, if we were to go back and we wanted to um, say recode everything uh, to be Spanish it'd be a lot easier because we have all of our strings in one area and uh, one little file rather than looking around the entire project. Um, in this project, it's not going to really matter too much because we're not going to be actually using any text. It's all numbers. Um, but it's a good it's uh, you know a good habit to do everything correctly the first time. Um, so let's do that. Let's name this um, button and then name it the full word one, button one. And don't worry if it says at string button one, it's just a reference. 
So as you continue on, do the same thing for button two, click OK. You'll see this goes back to new button because that's actually the text that's in it. Even though it's referencing button one, it's, um, it's still only showing the text button, new button. So go ahead and continue and do that for the rest of them. Um, when you get down to um, the clear button, type out clear um, and then equals, addition, subtraction, um, multiplication, and division. All right, and I'll catch up with you guys when I'm done doing mine. All right, once you've finished setting all your uh, string resource names, let's go over to App, Resources, and then down to Values, where you'll find the strings.xml file. Go ahead and double click that to open it. Now we'll see Hello World up here. We don't have this anymore, so let's go ahead and delete that. And you'll see button one, button two, button three, everything basically that you use to name your stuff. So this little field right here is going to be changed so we can actually change our text now. This is what our text will be. So when uh, it references button one, it'll bring up the string one. Let's take a quick look. See how it changed over there? All right, so let's go change the rest of them. All right, button two, three, four, five, six, seven, For button clear, I'm just going to put a C equals, obviously, equals sign addition, the plus, subtraction, minus, divide, and multiply. It's up to you. You can choose like the X or you can choose the asterisk. It's up to you. All right, let's go back to activity main, see what it looks like. All right, so it's all kind of small, right? If we were to actually put this on a phone, it'd be pretty darn small. So let's edit this. Let's make it a little bit bigger so these buttons are a little bit better looking, a little bit more nice. Let's go to down here, it'll say text. Now this is the actual XML editor. So let's go here and let's see, hit enter, type Android, and we'll type min width and as you're typing it just go ahead and hit enter and it'll fill in auto fill in the rest for you and we'll put set these to 80 dp dp stands for device pixels um, so obviously it'll be you know smaller than our let's see 80 pixels this way on my screen might be a lot larger than it would be say on like a phone so that's why they made device pixels they're easier to work with rather than just pixels uh, enough about that. So let's go ahead and change the rest of these. Just copy that code and paste it. Okay, and this is button 13. Okay, there it is. If you click on this, it'll show you which one you're actually editing. Somewhere in there, I actually had to go back and uh, delete my equals button, so that's why it's placed at the bottom for me. Change that. Okay. Now this one, this plus sign, we don't want it actually to be 80 dp. We want it to be 60. Let's see, because we have 80 plus 80 plus 80, which is 240. And now if we were to put these buttons at the bottom, 240 divided by 4 would be 60. So that's why we're changing it to that. So let's copy this code here. We'll put that for the rest of these buttons. And one more. 
Okay. So obviously this is down here. Let's move that up. Let's go back to the design. We'll move this up here. Perfect. Okay. So the next thing we need to do is we need to have some type of output. Let's go ahead and find, let's see. Let's do, let's just do number. We'll try to center it the best we can. See the line, the vertical green line here. Let's go ahead and put it, well, I guess I didn't like to work there. We'll move it over. Perfect. All right. Now this doesn't have a, you know, text in it, so we don't really have to edit um, anything over here. However, if you choose to, that's fine. Um, just make sure you leave it blank. But let's go ahead and double click the number one, and you'll see it says button for the ID. We want to change this to button one. And if you hit enter, it's going to give you an error saying, well, it's not really an error. It'll say update usages. And really, we, we do want this because it's going to update everything that has to do with button one to being named with the ID button one. So don't ask again, but yes. So button two is already named that. Button three, button four, button five, six, seven, eight, nine. Now this is button 10. It's not what we want. We want button zero. And that's kind of another thing I wanted to mention too, is we named this button Z-E-R-O, so we use the full word. And that's because we don't want the um, reference to be named the same thing as the ID. So let's make sure we name these differently. So using the digits in code is a little bit easier than typing out, or maybe quicker, maybe not easier, but quicker than typing the word zero. So that's why we're naming the IDs with the actual integer digits. So let's continue. Um, button clear, button C, um, button equals can be button E, oh, where'd it go, there we go, ID for addition could be a button A, and subtraction, this will be button M for multiplication, and Button D for divide. I should have probably named this division, but whatever. It doesn't really matter. If we feel like changing it, we can. But I don't really feel like it. So now all of our IDs are set. Our string references are set. And everything has their respective number in them. So their text is set correctly as well. So let's move on to the next step here. All right, now once again, we're getting close to that 15 minute mark for YouTube, so look for the rest of this video in part two.